Today, guys, we're going to be talking about five stop drinking myths. What do you believe that's holding you back? What do most people believe that is holding 90% of the adult population back? Because as we, as we know from previous videos, most people drink alcohol. Most people see alcohol in this very glamorous, sophisticated way. They see it as something that provides immense value in their life. And, you know, when we try to stop drinking, these are the type of people that are giving us advice. You know, somebody that has a few drinks at the weekend or somebody that's a heavy drinker, we ask them, how do we stop drinking? And they're going to tell you this whole range of information from it's going to be hard. Why don't you try moderating? Why don't you use willpower? You've got a disease. You get told this, all of this information, and it's very hard to piece things together. So if we're able to look at some of the myths and some of the things that these people believe, then we put ourselves miles ahead of most people that are trying to stop drinking. If we can see the mistakes and the ideas that other people have that are not true, and the ones that we start to believe because of the conditioning and all the stuff that's going on, then it just puts us in this fantastic position to kind of get through you know, the journey of being a non-drinker. So I think there's gonna be some pretty, pretty massive truth bombs dropped in this video. I mean, for some of you guys, that's gonna make you feel uncomfortable, but I urge you to watch this video in its entirety, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you feel, because it's gonna help you build that new paradigm that I talk about again and again and again. That's what stopping drinking is all about. It's building the new worldview. It's recreating a paradigm where you see alcohol for what it is. You see it as a poison, as something that does nothing for you. You see it the same way that you'd look at bleach. I don't wanna drink bleach, right? If we're able to do that, then the process of stopping drinking is like a light bulb switch. And I say it again and again and again and again and again, because I want you to get that into your head. That's the goal of this channel. That's the goal of Sober Clear. That's the goal of everything I do, is to help you build that worldview. So if we can see these myths, it's gonna change the game for you. And I just quickly wanna say before we get into this video, is that if you actually want my help going through a step-by-step -step system to reframe the way that you view alcohol to help you stop or control drinking in a positive, optimistic way, you can click the link in the description. There's a short 10-minute video that explains the method, explains how it works with people, how all that works, and then you'll be able to book a short call to see if that method may work for you. But I mean, for now, let's jump into the video. Let's start looking at the myths. So the first myth that I wanna share with you guys is that life won't be the same again. This is a myth, and it's something that holds so many people back. It holds most people back. In fact, it holds every single person that drinks alcohol back. They believe this myth. So what they believe is that if they stop drinking, their life won't be the same. The events won't be the same. The sporting events won't be the same. The barbecues won't be the same. Hanging out with their friends won't be the same. They're afraid that somehow if you take alcohol out of the equation, that all of these events, all of these things, all of these social activities, they won't be the same again. And the real thing that they believe is that they'll actually be worse off. They believe that when they remove alcohol from these activities, that it will actually be a detriment. It will be a negative thing. I bought into that for a very long time. I bought into that for the decade of trying to find a solution to my problem. I bought into that. So that meant that every single attempt to stop drinking started in the exact same frame of mind. I was removing something from my life. I was making a sacrifice of something that I loved, something that helped me, something that made all of these things better, made me more confident, made me more courageous. I bought into that. And that is a complete myth. Like I said, some of you guys are going to find this video uncomfortable, but I urge you just to watch the whole thing. But I've been on both ends of the spectrum, right? I've been on that end of the spectrum where I believed that I was making a genuine sacrifice. I was removing something from my life. And because that was my worldview, it was difficult to stop drinking. And I actually still believe this myth, right? I believe that. And for some of you guys watching this video, you may believe that if you remove alcohol, life won't look the same again. However, when you reframe the way that you view alcohol, because that's what it's all about. You can imagine this, right? If you see alcohol as something that is something that provides a benefit to your life and you view it that way, when you remove it, you are going to feel that these events and these activities and these things are not as fun because you're viewing alcohol in a very specific way. Now, on the contrary, and what I talk about on this channel and the method I take my clients through and the method that I went through is making alcohol something that provided nothing to you, right? It provided no value to you whatsoever. So then you start to see these events as the same, right? They're still enjoyable activities, going to a sporting game, hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your partner, going for a date where alcohol was involved in. When you remove alcohol and you, but you reframe the way that you view alcohol, 
these activities are not just as enjoyable, they're more enjoyable because you're more present, you're more connected to the people that you're with. And these activities become enjoyable. So this is a complete myth. Your life won't look the same because you're not poisoning yourself. You're not putting poison in your body and destroying things. Instead, you're more confident, you're more happy. And life won't look the same, but it isn't the way that most people think. Most people think that life is going to become negative and worse off. When they stop drinking, it's going to be worse, but it is not going to be worse. It is a complete myth. And I really want you to, if, that, if that's the one thing that you take away from this video, is that your life won't look the same again, but that's not going to be a bad thing. That's going to be a very, very, very good thing. So the next myth is that you'll have to deal with cravings forever. So I want to talk about this because I don't really touch on cravings too much on the channel. I have made a video about it in the past, but I just want to get into this. So now this is going to sound a little bit hard to believe because some of you guys are going to be suffering with cravings and they're going to be the thing that's holding you back. However, you have control over cravings. Now I know that sounds hard to believe because if you've not reframed the way that you view alcohol and you get a craving and you get a pang, then what you start to do is because you see alcohol in this way is you explore that feeling and you think that the craving has some legitimacy. You believe that, well, I feel like I want to drink and then your mind goes this way. So, so you see alcohol in this great glamorous way. You think that you want to drink and your mind goes this path. So you get to a point where you think, right, I want to drink. I see alcohol in this great way. Therefore, there is legitimacy in this craving. So I should follow it. I should continue down this path until I'm pulling my hair out thinking, I need a drink to get rid of this, this feeling of, of, you know, this itchy feeling of wanting something and not quite feeling right, not quite feeling being able to relax. And it's like a path that you go down. Now, when you reframe the way that you view alcohol, that path's totally different. You go the opposite direction. You have, it's like you have a choice. You either are able to go that way that I just spoke about, where you think there's a legitimacy in the craving, or you can go this other direction. And because you see alcohol as something that provided nothing to you, the craving can be used as a reminder that you've stopped drinking. Sounds crazy, right? But what you can do is you can remind yourself that you're getting rid of a poison, getting rid of something destructive, getting rid of something that provided nothing for you. So the craving quickly goes away. And that sounds crazy to a lot of people, but it works, providing that you've reframed the way that you grew up or providing that you've gone in that direction. So what ends up happening is when you get a craving, you choose which way to go. And what happens after doing that again and again and again and again for months is that the cravings diminish to pretty much nothing. I know it sounds hard to believe, but it happens. When you've done that for repeatedly again and again and again, and you've reframed the way that you view alcohol, the cravings pretty much become zero. Now, I still get sometimes, not going to lie, I'll be 100% honest with you guys, there are times when I have thoughts about alcohol. I'll be riding my motorbike and I'll go past a bar and it will go into my head, even now after a couple of years, right? But I'm in control of that. I don't, so I, I'm at this point where I have the thought. Now, I could very, very easily, if I saw alcohol was something that was going to be fun to drink and all of that stuff, I still, at, to this day, could go and explore and, and make this thought turn into a craving. But because I view alcohol as something that does nothing for me, because I'm building the life that I really want for myself, if I went that path, everything's destroyed. But I don't see alcohol in that way anymore. I see it in a different way. So I go a different direction with my mind. Boom, the thought is gone. And it's that simple. And you don't need to deal with cravings forever when you've taken the approach that I talk about on this channel. So the third myth that I want to talk about is that willpower and stopping drinking are related. I'm going to explain it like this. So in your life, you are probably a strong willed person. You have probably got things going on in your life that took immense amounts of willpower to do. That could have been overcoming certain obstacles that might have been having a family, getting married, having a partner. And even if you don't have that stuff now, there was probably a time in your life where you did something that required a lot of willpower. So naturally, what we start to believe is that willpower is going to be an effective way to help us stop drinking. We think that because we are strong-willed people, we can use our willpower to not drink alcohol. You know, I thought that as well. And I think most people do think that. They can just like white knuckle it. They can just hold on for dear life and just grit through it. Whenever they think of drinking, it's like, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to go to the bar. I'm going to avoid it. <sighs> go home. Right. And that's, that is a technique that some people use. And as we know, there are varying degrees of success when you use willpower to stop drinking alcohol. So as some of you guys know, in my story of stopping drinking, there was a period in my life where I threw up blood on a MacBook Pro after a really heavy night. And when I woke up in the morning, I said, I'm done. I'm finished. And I used willpower, nothing but willpower to stop drinking. And I lasted 
I can't remember exact times, seven or eight months, something like that. And during that time, life went so well. But I had stopped drinking. I really had done it for like seven or eight months. Started personal training, went back to finish my last year of university, had a car, had a girlfriend, everything was going really well. But what happened is one day is that the willpower ran out, right? And because alcohol is a drug, is we have one drink and then the inevitable happens. We have one more. And then before you know it, I'm back in the cycle of drinking regularly again. So what happened is, is the willpower ran out. So why do we use this method to stop drinking? Well, because we don't know another way, right? We think that we have to use will to not drink alcohol, but it's not the only way. What we can do instead is we reframe the way that we view alcohol as something that doesn't provide anything to us. And like I was talking about with the craving, so let's, let's just go back a step. Let's just talk about the cravings one more time. So we get a thought of drinking and we choose to explore the craving. We choose to go in this direction. And we get into a state of mind where we really want to drink, right? What we're essentially doing is, in our mind, is we're going this path and we're using willpower to avoid the craving. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So you're going this way, you see an alcohol in this great fashion, you, you know, you're really missing out on something, your mind goes this way, you get to a point where you're craving and now you use the willpower at this point. So the best way to do it is to never even go that path in the first place. It's just to switch it. It's to switch the way that you see alcohol and your mind just goes this other direction where you don't even need to use willpower. You just go, okay, so I'm thinking about alcohol. Is that going to do anything for me? Absolutely not. Why am I thinking about it? Boom, the thought is gone. There's two different ways to approach it, right? You either approach it in this way where you see alcohol as something that's glamorous, as great as, you know, making you relax, or you see it the complete opposite. You see it the same way that you'd see a bottle of bleach. Or the same way that you see an orange juice. It's like, I can take it or leave it. I don't care. It just, it's like, whatever. So what? Very big difference. But this is a myth, is that willpower and stopping drinking are related. Well, they're not. It works. Don't get me wrong. But if you want that lasting success, sorry, but it's just not going to cut it in the long term. For some people, it does, though. Don't get me wrong. There are people that have probably used willpower for their whole life, but they still go this direction in their mind. So they're still in like a negative state of mind where, you know, they're going this way. And even after 10 years, 20 years, they still sometimes have to like go, ah, no, nah, I can't drink. I'm going to have to go home. This, this is too much for me. I don't want to go that way. I want to be around my friends. I want to have fun. If my friends are drinking, I don't want to have to go home and feel like I'm missing out. I just want to enjoy the moment. Now, the fourth myth that I want to talk about is that you are the problem. So when I first stopped drinking alcohol, I am, um, well, when I was first looking for a solution to my problem, I should say, I went to 12 step meetings and here I was made to decide whether or not I'm an alcoholic. And because I've told you this, I've told you this story many times, but because um, because all the people around me had drinking problems and, and, and they behaved in a similar way to me, then I must be like them. That's, that's, that's what it must be. I must be an alcoholic because everybody else is. So I went along with it. I bought into it. And, you know, the AA method wasn't for me. After a few months, I was gone. I didn't want to go that way anymore. Like it just wasn't effective. So I didn't go that path. There are many people that do stay on that path and they get results, right? But because I'd been told that I was the problem, because I'd been told I was an alcoholic, when I left that, I still believed that. I still believed that I had a problem with myself. So now I've got this justification in my mind that I can drink as much as I like because there's something wrong with me. I'm an alcoholic, I've got a disease. I suffer from alcoholism. So if I have one drink, then now I've got an excuse to keep drinking. Now, what happened later on in life is that I reframed the way that I viewed alcohol and that was no longer the case. So I removed alcohol and everything went okay, right? I moved to Thailand, I started this new business and because I'd reframed the way that I viewed alcohol, I started to realize that, wait a minute, I was never the problem. The drug was the problem, right? Why do we have people that have been smokers their whole life? So they, they've been smoking cigarettes for 30 years, they stop cigarettes, but they don't get labeled as a cigaretteaholic for the rest of their life, right? And, and why is it that somebody that smokes, they don't get told that you're going to have to give yourself up to God for the rest of your life? No, people that stop smoking, they stop smoking and they just get on with it, right? What about gamblers? What about people that get addicted to porn or video games? Do we then call them pornaholics or video gameaholics for the rest of their life? Of course not. But with alcohol, for some strange reason, it's all down to you. Now, the reason why this is, in, in my opinion, is because nobody's reframed the way that they view alcohol. We all have agreed on this paradigm that alcohol is this great thing that's difficult to give up. Whereas these other vices like, like crack cocaine or cigarettes, we know that they ain't good. We know that they're just pure drugs. 
But because of this conditioning, because of this glamorizing and all of this crap surrounding alcohol, everybody's bought into the illusion. But you don't need to buy into the illusion. You can go the other direction where it's like a light bulb switch and you see it the same way that you see bleach, like I said before. That's possible. And when you do that, then you realize that you were never the problem. The same way that a cigarette smoker realizes that they were never the problem, right? They just got rid of the cigarettes, got on with their life. And that's possible for alcohol, but most people don't realize that. And that's like a big hurdle that most people have got to overcome. And that's why I make this channel. That's why I do these videos is to help you build that new paradigm and that new worldview where you realize that you were never the problem. So the fifth myth that I've got for you guys is that the process is difficult. Not gonna lie, for some people watching this video, you're gonna think I've lost the plot, but I've not lost the plot. The first decade of trying to find a solution to my problem, it was difficult. It was very, very challenging. Just like I said, because I saw alcohol in this very specific way, I was removing something that provided something to me, so it was difficult. Now, this is also a myth, providing you take the right approach that I talk about on this channel, right? The process can be enjoyable. It can be fun. You can go through it and it can feel effortless. It can feel like a, a switch. And just to kind of follow on from this point is that what you do when you're trying to make stopping drinking this enjoyable, effortless process is you use first principles thinking. You start to bring awareness to all of the reasons why you think you drink. Just like we've kind of done in this video, we've kind of scratched the surface, started bringing awareness to all of these myths. But what you do when you try to make the process enjoyable and effortless is you do it to every single one of them. Right? You do a lot of introspection, you've got to do a lot of study, you've got to do a lot of inner work to build that new worldview. There are many ways to do this. My program is one example of this. We take people through a step-by-step, -step first principle system to make them reframe the way that they view alcohol so it's like that light bulb switch. But there are plenty of ways to do this. You can read books, you can watch YouTube videos, you can listen to podcasts, you can read blogs, you can have conversations with people that have successfully reframed the way that they view alcohol. There are many ways to do this. Now, like I said, there's a short video below that outlines the Sober Clear method in the description that you can watch. See if that's something for you. And also, when this first principles approach that I'm talking about, there's a video that I'll link to in the description that talks about that in a lot more detail. And that video kind of outlines how you would go through a first principles mental model to stop drinking. So I advise you to go and check those out. And guys, if you click the videos on the screen now, you can learn more about the four stages of stopping drinking, as well as why 90% of people can't stop drinking. I'll see you in the next video.